No. Okay, I'm gonna have to sit. Did, maybe maybe it's this. I don't know. I'll ask tech support about that. Anyhow, like Lee said, she's on the other computer. She will be monitoring it. If you've got a question, um, I've got these gizmos on, so I should be able to hear you. So uh, let's get started. Everybody should have gotten one of these cute little kits, right? With the stuff. Okay. So we're going to unpack it together if you haven't done that already. Oh, and the CD that you have is for tracing. Um, they came out of a private collection, so I have no idea what's on them. It might be surprised if you stick it into your CD player, <laughs> but it is just for tracing. This is, where's my example? Oh, Lee, can you hold up the example or give them back to, or give one back to me? Okay, <laughs> you see, yeah, let me, let me have, all right, yeah. So this, this is the, the size of the, the painting that we're gonna do. And we'll talk about the little hole in a minute. First, let's get all of our supplies together. So if you guys are right-handed, all of your supplies should be on the right. And this is, I, hopefully you have two water containers, one that's gonna stay just clean water, and then another one that you're going to use to wash your brush out. And our paints will be on the right, our pencil, everything is gonna be on the right. Your wine will be on the opposite side. The biggest reason for that is that you don't take your paintbrush and clean it in your wine glass. That would be bad. You would want to throw your wine away after that and that's alcohol abuse. So make sure you keep your wine separate from your painting stuff or whatever beverage you're drinking. And I'm just gonna be with water. All right, so unpack your materials. Take this thing completely out. We're not gonna use this, it's a cute little sketchbook, but um, not today, unless you wanna take notes, that might be good for that. And now in here, you've got your brush. So take this little protective cover off and with your, it, with your water, wash this off. What it does is it has a glue that's on it and it sticks all the hairs together, but it is water soluble so you're going to want to wash that off. Otherwise, it's just not going to work at all. And kind of massage it with your fingers a little bit. Break up that glue. There you go. It should take just a couple seconds, and then that brush should be, should be softening. Does anybody have brushes of their own that they're going to be utilizing? Any hands? OK, let me switch. Uh, no, OK. Anyway, so we're going to get by with just one brush. It is a tiny brush, but I like to paint tiny anyway, so we'll be okay. All right, so if you've got that nice and pliable now, everybody yes, good brush. Okay, so set that down. And we can still use this as, as clean water. And this will be your dirty water. So next is going to be your paints. Or no, let's undo the uh, eraser. Okay, you may be wondering why a special little eraser in a watercolor uh, kit, but this is a good eraser because <laughs> it's also impossible to get open. <laughs> uh, it's a good eraser. The, when you're doing watercolor paper, if you use regular pencil and you try to erase things with a pink eraser, uh, sometimes it will leave pink on the paper and you don't want that to happen. So everybody, get through this child-proof packaging. Everybody borrow a four-year-old to get into the package for you. <laughs> okay, now I got it. Okay, I got it. There we go. It reminds me of chiclets. Who remembers what chiclets are? <laughs> Okay, eraser, got it. So just in case you've messed up a circle, which hopefully nobody should, you could erase it with this. All right, and this is a decent pencil. And a pencil sharpener, which I doubt we'll even use. Okay, on to the paints. Um, if nobody's ever used 
tube paints before, they are, in my opinion, so much better than the little dried things that we got as grade schoolers that you just stirred and stirred and stirred and it never seemed dark enough. Um, these are, it's gonna be such a different experience, you'll see. So if you haven't opened them yet, this is pretty basic. It's like a little tube of medicine. There's that little point that's inside the cap. So you take the cap off, you flip it upside down, puncture through, try not to squeeze the tube or you're gonna have a mess. Puncture through a little bit, not yet. <laughs> Start with blue and black. There we go. You'll, you'll, I just heard a little snap. Then you know you made it. And then there's dot of paint. So you, you know that you made it. Okay, so take that black and these are your little mixing trays down here. I want you to just put very little. It, it, a little goes a really long way. So I've got that much. Okay. Put the cap back on. And let's do blue. Okay, now I know what I'm doing, it went much better. Make sure there's no um, lint or in my case, cat hair in your, in your little mixing wells. Yeah, put it in the in a different well. So there you go. I've got just black and blue. That's all we're going to use because we're going to do this painting first. Okay, so now a little bit about oh expectations of watercolor. The idea of this class is to not copy this exactly. What I'm going to do is just give you a couple ideas how water flows on the paper, how it interacts with. Um, with the ink, the ink, with the pigments and the water. And um, everybody should look different. I hope so, that, that's the goal. So everybody has a different look, looking painting. And when you're done with this, if you for some reason absolutely hate it, I hope you don't, don't forget there's all these other things you can do with watercolor. You can slice it up and make a bookmark, put a little ribbon on it. Or if you really hate it, you can slice it up smaller and make a little gift tag. So all is not lost. And also with watercolor paper, you can use both sides. So after we're done with, with this one, you can flip it over, try again, do a different color. So since you were given two pieces of paper, it actually can be four paintings. Okay, let's see, what else am I missing here? Oh, let's just get started. So the first thing I want you to do, uh, hopefully everybody has a flat waterproof surface. I'm using this piece of aluminum that's got a plastic on it. And I want you to tape down your painting because if, when you use a lot of water, it might start bubbling and it's a little bit annoying. So the tape helps, tape helps keep it flat. You can kind of see me, okay. So I'm actually using uh, artist tape, but it's too spendy to have you guys go out and buy it all. So masking tape will just work, work for now. What's that? That's that step. So paint. Uh, another little thing, if you want to grab it, if you're close to your kitchen, is uh, salt. Just normal table salt. I didn't use it on this painting, but you can feel free to try it yourself. What it does is when the paper is wet with the pigment, you can sprinkle a little bit of salt and it kind of pushes it away and it makes like a little crystalline type. I'll, I'll do it on my painting so you can see, but it's just plain old table salt. If you want to have that handy, you just take a little pinch and it's just kind of a fun effect that you can create.
if everybody really loves this painting experience, uh, these paints will last you quite a long time. The beauty of watercolor is that even when after this dries up, it's still going to be good to use. You can just let it dry. I would put plastic or something over it. So again, in my case, I don't get cat hair in it. Um, and then you can come back to it anytime. Just get it wet again, and it's good to go. Unlike acrylics, which they dry up, and then that's the end of it. So that's another reason why I like watercolors, because I'm cheap, and they can last a really long time. If you want to invest just a little bit of money, these are at craft stores. So you can use these same paints and just fill up the wells, and this has a nice little, a nice little lid that keeps it clean. And again, this has probably been sitting in here for two months, and they're perfectly fine. I, I could paint right out of this. Okie doke. Let's get started. So like I said, the first thing we're going to do is uh, just black and blue, just to get you going. Now with watercolor, you can see that there's white on here. That is not white. In fact, don't even use that ever. It just makes things look black. Uh, and usually I would say to throw the black away, but um, I like to use what's called Payne's gray. And that kind of makes this more, it's a bluish gray. It's just a prettier darkness to use, but um, we'll, we'll use the black, we'll be okay. So when you do watercolor, the white that is on here is the paper. So there are different techniques. So in order to get the these cloud looking, whatever you want to think, you have to keep the paper white. And there's another way to do it where you can use this Frisket product and it's sort of like a rubber cement. You can paint that on and it sticks to the paper and then you can paint over it. And then after the paper dries, you peel it off and it reveals the white of the paper. Um, it works really well, but it's kind of stinky and also kind of expensive. So we're just gonna play around with leaving the paper uh, dry and not painting on it. And that's what's gonna give you these clouds effects. So the thing with watercolor is all is about understanding how the wetness of the paper uh, determines the lines. So if you can see, like some of these are really, super, they're what's called a hard edge. And that means that the paint came up against dry paper. Down here where it's all kind of soft and misty, that's because the paper was wet. And then I put a little bit of paint in it and it kind of flowed the way the water goes. So here's a, an example I took out of a book. So these are the different effects that you get. This, I know it's just black and white. You see it's super fuzzy. That means the paper was really wet and then a little paint was applied and it flowed. And then here's the paper drying a little bit more, a little more, and then here is super completely dry paper with paint on it. You see how you get this super hard edge. So in order to play with this effect, the first thing we're gonna do is after we trace our circle, you're gonna get just some of the paper wet. And then I want you to be able to pick it up and look at it and you can see it's kind of shiny, not shiny. And then we'll put paint in it and you can just watch it flow and see which, which where it goes, okay? So everybody get out your CD, whatever you were gifted. I have something from 2004. Okay, so you're just gonna put the CD on your paper and don't go all the way around. You're gonna leave the bottom open. How much you wanna leave open is up to you. And then we're just kinda gonna artistically drag, drag the painting down that way, okay? And also don't, you don't have to go super dark. Okay, now the center of this can be your moon, your sun, whatever you want it to be. And as you know, as I didn't put it in the center, so now you can use it to put it anywhere in your composition that you want to. Again, a super, super light line. If 
it does look a little dark, use your good eraser and you can lighten it up. Okay, we're almost to the real good part here. Take your brush and a little bit of water. And I want you to just sort of add a couple drops of water into the black. Wow, it's a tiny brush. <laughs> it's gonna take a little bit. And do the same thing with the blue. There, that works. Fill it up and kind of push it against the edge of the, the well there. Okay, now you should have more like what can be a puddle. And then you can stir that a little bit. Don't stir the entire thing, just sort of the edge of it. I'm gonna put a little bit over here. And I'm gonna take some of the blue and move that over here. So now I've got a blue-black mixture. And you don't have to keep stir, 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 just a, a tiny little wiggle and that's good. Hopefully everybody's got paper towels handy because this is your eraser. If you do something on here and you don't like it as fast as you can, just try to blot it up and it will pull up. You will, you may never get back to white paper again, but this will at least pull up the water. And if sometimes if you do it a couple times, you'll be able to pull up some of the paint, um, but don't worry, you're not gonna make a mistake. All right, so once you wash your brush out, now with just water, I want you to just put some stripes, just like, like that, back and forth, real loose, don't worry about it. Use a, water, a lot of water, a little water. Let's see, how do I do this? Make sure you leave dry paper. You should be able to tilt it and, and see where the water is landing. I'm gonna go right over the top of my moon circle. So maybe I'll have a blue cloud or something in front of it. Okay, right down to your imaginary horizon line. If you wanna actually put a horizon line, you can take the edge of your other piece of paper just draw a quick line like that. And again, that can be anywhere in the drawing, doesn't matter. Okay, here we go. I've got some wet, I've got some dry. Pick up either color, the blue, the black, the mixture. see what happens. I'm going through my puddles. I'm going beyond them. I'm going in them. Just give it a little time to re react with the water that's on there. The more water you add, the lighter you're going to get. See how this is nice and dark? because there's not much water in that. Don't feel like you have to go back and forth and back and forth and fill it in. Just kind of let it, let it be a watercolor. Kind of a pretty blue.
Now, if you start going back over it and messing with it, you're going to lose the freshness, watercolor quality that you've got. Okay, that's, I call that unpainting. Because the more you mess with it, the more it's going to end up looking like a kitchen. It's all going to be monochrome and boring. So I want to see some results. Who's brave? Hold it up to your camera. Okay, tech help. How do I get a grid? Okay, Lee can see it, but I can't. Okay. Nice. Anybody else? Nice. Pretty. So you can get a lot of different shades with just two colors. Cool. Okay, now does everybody see how there's, you can see the difference of the wet paper and the dry paper and the sheen of it. And if you've used a lot of water, you'll see a little bit of rippling in the paper, but that's okay. After it dries, it'll, it'll lay back down again. Okay, now if you have left a bottom horizon, like, like I did on the example, I'm just gonna fill that in uh, kind of the same method, but probably a little bit more solid. I'm gonna kind of make it darker. So maybe this reads like an ocean or a body of water or something like that. And then I'm gonna just use the same technique and just pull this down out of, out of the circle, just, just for fun. But again, it's just swiping back and forth no plan. I'm not drawing any marks there. I'm just going to go for it. Oh, I know. This is what you guys could do. If you want, um, you can try the salt. So what you'll do is paint, paint a decent size area with a lot of pigment and then wait just a few minutes, maybe one minute, until it's not super shiny paper and then you're going to sprinkle some salt and you'll see it kind of makes this little crystalline thing. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that with, with mine. So there's my moon over here. Okay. I've got to put my cheater readers. I'm old. So first I'm going to get this area wet and I want to go right along my my line. I'll worry about this bottom stuff later. And it's kind of nice I have dirty water so I can actually see where I painted. Okay, there we go. That's wet. And now I'm going to add, hmm, maybe I'll do this straight blue. Looks really pretty. So you got to work kind of quick. You don't want your paper to dry up before you're done. Okay, I'm actually going to take my eraser and I'm kind of going for maybe a reflection of this moon. So I'm going to pull up some of this paint because it's still wet. See how that worked? Pull up. Okay, and now where this part is wet here, I'm going to sprinkle some salt. Obviously, I've got to do it this way. Okay, sprinkling salt. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, it doesn't take much. All right, now I've got to leave that flat, otherwise it's going to roll off. So I'll, I'll try to paint the last little part, kind of the waves as they come down, or whatever you want to call that. And the salt will do its magic, I hope. So again, I'm going to use the same technique of just doing a couple strips back and forth, leaving the white paper. Okay, and then add in mixture of blue and blue and black. Oh, that's dark. This brush is actually nice. It's got a nice little tip on it. some more blue. Okay, don't overthink it. So I kind of want my moon to show up a little bit more. So I'm going to put just a soft background around it just to kind of make it show up. I can kind of see it. Okay. How's that? How's everybody doing? You guys can be brave and maybe one or two unmute. I need some feedback. Does anybody have any questions? Do we take the salt off now? Did you already no. brush it off? No, it, it'll, it'll sit on there until the paint completely dries. Oh. And mm. um, when you stop paying attention to it, that's when it'll start doing its crystally thing. It's sort of like boiling water. If you watch it, it's not going to do it. Um, but it's also a timing thing. Uh, it might okay. take you a, a another try on a different painting. If it's too wet, it just dissolves the salt and it doesn't work. So it's got to be sort of dry, which, which is so hard because I can't see your guys' paper. Yeah, but, um, if it didn't work, don't worry about it. Maybe your paper was too dry or too wet, but um, we can try to get on the next painting. But it will just stay on there until everything's dry. Um, if you want to speed things up, you can use your hair dryer. I, I have mine, but it would be extremely noisy. But that, that's another trick to kind of keep things going along. If you need an area that needs to be super dry before you work on it, you just use a hair, hair dryer on it. Anybody else? Is everybody happy with what you did? Can can I can I see see some see some pictures? Ooh, pretty. I love it. Yeah, isn't this great how everybody's comes out different, even though you're watching this, the same video? Hey, tech support, is there some way I can see more people than these six? I don't know how. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. Now I can see more people. <laughs> There's I think we should. I think we should have started sipping at uh, one o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yes, everybody take everybody that would, would like to uh, please sip. If I sip, I'll start slurring. So um, I'm going to not partake until after the class is over. The more we sip, the prettier our paintings get. There you go. Yep. <laughs> right. <laughs> So Stephen, you've got two windows up. You've got two computers going. Um, yep. I do. <laughs> Actually, one is. Uh, One's Linda's. <laughs> my 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 computer doesn't have sound. Oh, got it. Okay. Something is wrong with my sound, so I had to use my uh, iPod. Got it. Dad. Or iPad. Dad. <laughs> And that's a, a lovely Lauren Rengetti original behind you. Yes, that's right. Yes, yes, she's a wonderful local painter. Lauren. Okay, so um, how about we just take a five minute break, get up, stretch, maybe refresh your glass and um, give yourself some clean water because this has the black and the blue in it. And then we'll come back and we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. And we're gonna try some more colors. Does that sound good? So how about everybody back in what? I know seven minutes, how's that? Seven whole minutes, so it's in between five and 10. Okay, see you in seven minutes. <laughs> All right. And I'll sit here and talk if, it's, if somebody needs to talk at me. No, I don't think you do. Yeah, you can use all. I know, oh. but you gotta let it dry. Oh, oh. Yeah, he muted. Hi, Maureen. Hi, Patricia. <laughs> this is fun. Oh, good. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> speaker view. Okay, yeah, Chris is, is educating me as we do this. <laughs> Thank God he's here. <laughs> okay. Think they're liking it? Okay. Yeah. So I, I could. I mean, I can see some smiles as I'm. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. I, 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 so that's good. <laughs> I can't interact with the people as much. That's why I'm like, Come, show me your work. I well, see, see I mean, there's one group. Let's see. I see three. There's like five people in that room. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole bunch. So that's cool. <laughs> They're all waving. <laughs> yeah, all fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh way. way cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, there they are. Yay. Well, hey. Hey. <laughs> My kind of people. <laughs> All right, bye, husband. Oh, my tech support is going home. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, well, I'm actually going to stop for a second because I got to stretch. So let's see, mute. We're live in three, two, one. <laughs> All right, welcome back everybody. Did you have a nice little break? <clears throat> so unfortunately, um, my salt didn't work. So that means my paper was too wet or whatever, but no big deal. Um, I might try to get on, on the next painting. So what we're gonna do is the next painting. And I want you to, if you have your paint painting taped, you can probably sit, use the same tape, it's up to you. I'm, I'm gonna use the same tape because I'm lazy. But I want you to uh, untape this one and then put a fresh piece of paper down.
headset making all kinds of crazy noise. Okay. Alrighty. Fresh start. So, since we have, these are the primary colors. Um, I don't know if we want to use all of them. Maybe let's save the red for last. We'll just work with blue and green and yellow. Okay, so open up your green and your yellow and put that in the two clean dishes. And actually, I'm going to just sop up whatever I got going on here with the first color so that I have another empty well. So what did I say? Green and green and yellow. Oh, I can't see. I hate my eyes. So I want to hear from somebody that has never used tubes before. Tell me what you think. Anybody? Never used tubes. I like them. I've never used them. Way better than the old school kindergarten dry paint. Yeah, no kidding, right? <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody hear The big messy painter. I've got paint all over my fingertips, okay. all over everything. That's it. Wash it off quickly. That means you did, are doing it right, right? <laughs> yeah, it's just the creative side. And it sure didn't take much paint, did it, to uh, get a, a painting going. Just barely touch it and add water. OK, green, yellow, black, blue. All right, so after you've got that, um, again, take your all-time rock and roll CD or whatever that you got, and you're going to do the same thing with the circle, and then leave the bottom open. I think I'm going to leave my circle in the center, but just slightly above the middle. And then the horizon line, take your other piece of paper and use the straight edge on that and stick in a horizon somewhere. Okay, everybody ready? Okay, I see, I see some heads nodding, yes. So I think again, uh, let's start with the sky. Now, this I painted at home, and so it, the, the blue is different. The blue that we have in our tray, um, as you can, you can see, it's definitely more turquoise looking. So uh, don't freak out. It's still, I think it's still a really pretty color, but um, that's what we're going to use for, for the sky is the, the blue. And this time I want you to try to use your eraser. And that's how these clouds are made. So what we're going to do is get most of the sky kind of painted with a nice color. And then you can use your paper towel and you wad it up a little bit and you pull the color off. And then that's what's going to make these little puppy clouds. So first get your paper wet. That's, you know, however much of the sky that you want to do. Use clean water. So maybe, hopefully you have your, your clean, clean water that you haven't dumped anything in. And just get it wet with water. Now this time we're going to get the whole thing wet. 
don't leave any um, white spaces. But if you have a sun or whatever that wants to be, do paint around that. Now, with this much water on your paper, you're probably going to see that it's going to bubble up a little bit. But again, don't worry about it. It'll it'll go flat when it dries out. So just getting the whole sky wet with clean water. Oh, I forgot to ask about the wine. How's everybody enjoying the wines? Who's drinking the uh, Marichal Foch? Can I see a thumbs up? Sandra is. There we go. Okay, so for those of you that, that do have the wine, I want you to notice the label on it was actually created by a member of the Ridgeville Arts Association. So we uh, had a little contest, all of us artists, and that label was chosen. I think that's just a pretty cool partnership between the city and Gary Gouget and Ridgefield Arts Association. Hopefully there will be more wine in the future and we'll have more chances to make new labels because they didn't choose mine and I really wanted to win. <laughs> so we'll have another chance, I hope. All right, so now we've got your, your sky is all wet. I want to see what your label looked like. I actually gift it to somebody. Oh, so, um, you didn't yeah, take a picture? You know, it's maybe in my archives. The gist oh. of it was basically a, um, a sign that said roundabout, and then there was grapes hanging on it, and it was like kind oh. of all, all black, and, so, and it said roundabout red. I cool. Kind of funny, but anyway, thank you, Carrie. We thank saw, you. We thank saw you. it. Uh, we saw it the other night. Because uh, uh, I do yes. know the person that owns it, don't you? It was, on, it was on somebody's wall. So, oh, he hung it up? Oh, how sweet. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Very happy with it. <laughs> would that be the old mayor? Yes, it would be the old mayor. Secrets <laughs> 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 out. Old. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis <Hey>. on old. <laughs> <laughs> We're all friends. Okay. <laughs> I'm yapping so much that my paper's drying up. <laughs> Okay, so we have a wet sky. You should be able to tell the difference between wet and dry paper now, right? Kind of looking at the sheen. All right, so mix up um, some blue with some water. Oops, I just ruined my clean water. I need clean water. I got it. I got lots of. Nobody's dipped in their wine yet, right? Somebody have a question? No, no but, but I almost drank the water. <laughs> Don't do she that. She almost drank the paint water. <laughs> <laughs> Won't taste good. Okay, what was I doing? Okay, I was mixing up blue. So I'm putting... Blue. I'm just getting the blue a little bit watered down because it, it is pretty intense. But I still, when I do this area, I still want it to be kind of darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. So I'll show you another technique for doing that. Okay, here we go. So I've got a lot of intense paint on here. My paper. Put it wet. in another one and add water to it. Yeah, so just so I don't dilute. Yeah, um, so I don't dilute my source so much, just in case I want to go back and really use some intense. If I add oh. to that, then that whole thing will be diluted. Does that make sense? You can always yeah, I get it. Towel and add more paint. You know, you've got that whole tube of paint. Okay, so here we go. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to get intense color up here. And again, you got to kind of work fast because 
in order to pull your clouds out, it's it's got to be wet. Now, normally I would grab a bigger paintbrush, um, but since you guys don't have one, I don't want to cheat and do that to you. But because because see, you're seeing brush marks across here, but we'll just embrace it. Okay, now in order to make this nice and uh, light, I'm just gonna add water and let the pigment kind of run down to the bottom of the horizon there. And if it gets too drippy, you guys are working flat, I'm not, so you don't, we don't have this problem. Okay. Okay, watercolor is a lot about push and pull of pigment and paint. It's like if I were to take, there's a lot of pigment right here. If I were to take water and put that on it, the pigment um, out, you know, the water out does the pigment and it would actually push it away and you would get what's called a watermark. And you might wanna do that on purpose. I'll, I'll just go ahead and, and do that. So I'm adding more water than there is pigment. It might take a second or two, but it, it will push the pigment out of the way. At least it's supposed to. It'll make a liar out of me. Nope, it's just running down. Anyway, while your paper's still wet, take your eraser, your little cloud, cloud former, and kind of wad it up. And then you can push down for a second and pull up. And you should be able to pull up some pigment and make a cloud. Use a new piece of paper, new portion of paper towel every time. There, that one worked. And you don't want it to look like your thumb. So that's why you kind of wad it up a little bit. That worked. Did people get at least a cloud or two in there? Good one. It's, it's again, it's about timing and how much paint you have on the paper. Is anybody having the effect of the little, can you see little granular things from your blue? Yeah, I can see that. Okay. Um, remember you guys only did pay $10 for all of this equipment. So this would actually be a, a characteristic of a cheap but we're not gonna let that stop us, right? Because this is still fun. Um, real super professional people will pay $10 for one tube. And then you will never have this, this happening. But you know, in this situation, I think it looks kind of cool. Maybe the green will do it too and it'll look like grass. We'll find out. But yeah, these, these paints, I mean, I hope everybody continues to use them and play with them and maybe we'll do another Zoom class. And you, if you've oh, yeah. uh, art sky. your kit, you, you I got a light sky. Yeah. Okay, so we've got some sky, some clouds, and all right. So if we were to start painting this with the green or the yellow, this is still really wet. And as soon as you touch it, it would probably what I call blow out into the upper part. But see where the yellow is? I think I kind of want that to happen. So I'm gonna paint yellow and I'm hoping it's gonna carry up into the upper part of the sky. So it'll kind of maybe be around the sun. We'll see, let's see what happens. But then again, what happens when you mix yellow and blue? Everybody shout it out, what do you get? Green. You get green. Green. So we're probably gonna have a green sky. But Let's just see what happens. So let's mix up some yellow. Oh, it's already turning green. 
Yep, it's going to be green. Okay, I'm going to paint right along my horizon because this is going to be green. Yay! Oh, <laughs> Yikes. Drink. Okay, so I'm just getting a, a swath of this. Uh, we see you rather than the rain. Do you mind moving? Oh, moving. Was I blocking it? No, I was seeing other people and not you. It's because when people talk. Oh, yeah, that's a setting that you have. So go into gallery view, and then there's three little dots. If you hover above Maureen's thing, if there's there's three little dots, click the three little dots, and then you can pin her video so that whenever she's talking or if somebody else is talking, it doesn't matter. Her video is always the one that you'll see big. Let's see, where do you paint the yellow? I don't know. I'm still waiting I'm, for I'm just in, in the middle. And then I'm going to <clears throat> add some green and I'll paint on oh, the other okay. side. I'm just winging it. Can you lift your painting up more? It's hard to see. There we go. The color. It's like the lighting is with okay, the so white. There. Oh, oh there. there. Oh, there. there. Yep. Okay, so it's okay. an angle thing. Um, okay. Now I see color. Mm -hmm. Is it a big blob of yellow? Yeah, this one. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But they're trying to see what I'm doing. And the angle is wrong. Okay. Oh, okay. oh I did my picture all wrong. <laughs> oh, no, no. There, there is no wrong. There is no wrong. <laughs> Nope. Oh, I need to go back to mute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm trying to adjust the angle. Does that help a little bit? Is, is that okay? Okay. All right. So, um, here's my example. I'm just going to go through and paint the green background. So you can play with light and dark and put some green dots in there. We're kind of making grass, I guess, is what we're doing. And then um, let me see how this works. I usually mix black and blue, and I get gray. Let's see how that works. Do I like that color? No, that's black. OK, let's try mm -hmm. green. What happens when you mix green and blue? No, well, that might be fun. So here's your chance to just play with your paints. Mix some different colors and you can paint your meadow however you feel like it. Okay. So this is called the wet and wet technique. We're getting the paper wet and then you're adding the paint to it. And remember, that makes those really soft lines. And what color is she doing? I'm going to do my zigzaggy steps. So yeah, my favorite saying is you're not painting the kitchen. So don't make it super even, all the same color. That's boring. So there's some green. Add some blues and blacks. Maybe mix the yellow and the blue and see what shade of green you come up with. So I just have a request. Um, we are on an iPad and so we can't pin you. If people could make sure they're muted if they're not sharing, then we are able to see Maureen. Oh. Thanks. Whoa. 
that's intense. But I like it. Keep talking. Okay. Oh, I'm supposed to keep talking and then I'll stay pinned. Is that how that works? Oh my God. I've never, no one's ever asked me to keep talking. It's usually shut up. Okay. How's that going for everybody? Let's see. I'm going to do some more green over here. Green grass. Just let it drip. And I don't know what you guys are painting on, but if it's mobile like this, feel free to pick it up and, and tilt it and, you know, kind of work with the water a little bit. Oh, I said I was going to do salt. Totally forgot. You guys can do it on your own. I don't know, that grainy stuff's kind of cool. Okay, when you're happy with your base meadow, um, if you've got access to a hair dryer, now's the time to whip that sucker out and we're going to dry the paper and get it super duper dry. If you don't have a hair dryer, you can do like this, <laughs> go outside, wave it around, but it should dry pretty quick. So I'm going to mute and do a hair dryer so it won't, uh, be noisy.
If you are talking to us, we can't hear you. There you are. Okay, it, because it, um, operator error and I was touching the screen. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> you have to touch the computer pad. Sorry about that. Like I said, I, I don't spend much time in front of a computer. Okay, so I see some people still kind of waving around and, and whatever, but hopefully you've got mostly dry going on. Um, when you're doing watercolor, in order to add the more detail, that's what part of the game is, is waiting, let it dry, your paper's dry, and now you can add um, details. So sometimes it's layer upon layer of, of doing this. So all I'm gonna do is, um, I'm just gonna add some little wispy grass thingies that I kind of had in here, just to give us some sort of a foreground. You don't have to do this. Um, and then actually let's, if you want to do red poppies, we can add some flowers. So if you want to open up your, your red and we'll just do a couple little red dots and hopefully it'll look like red poppies in a field. I'm just, again, winging, making this up. Don't make a mess. Okay. Okay, it won't take much at all, just a dot of paint. Okay. That effect on. Okay, start with a clean brush. And again, I'm just using straight green, but pretty intense, uh, not very much water added in with it. And this is a, it's a nice little brush. It comes to a nice point, which is something you wanna look for when you're doing watercolor. So if you're thinking of this as a field, you wouldn't be able to see individual blades of grass way back here in the distance, but you, maybe you would see them up front. So I'm only gonna put a couple up here, kind of like in the foreground. going to add a little bit of, I don't know, blue, just so it doesn't all look exactly the same. Now I'm just gonna take a clean brush, clean water, and this hopefully this grass is still wet. I'm just gonna kind of touch the bottom and just sort of blend it into the, the paper there. I'm planting the grass. Yeah, it didn't do much. Okay, what else can we do? Hold, hold the painting up. What's that? How's that? That filled the screen? Okay. These are just little details you could spend hours on if you felt like it. Is the angle still okay? Can I see some? Yes is okay. Now let's play with the red. Let's just put a couple little things in there that might be interpreted as uh, red poppies. So I'm not putting very much water at all. It's going to be really intense. Let's just do a couple poppy flowers. And they would be bigger if they were up closer. And 
now I'm going to water down the, the red. So it's, what's the matter? Oh, oh, okay, they're super small, that's right. Okay, now I'm just, I'm going to add a little bit more water so I have more of a, a watery pink, red, and then just kind of put that in the background. Because those poppies are far off in the distance and so they wouldn't be, wouldn't be as noticeable. Just doing little dots. Merely a suggestion. You don't have to do that at all if you don't want to. Like I said, I kind of just came up with this when I went, oh, red, let's make poppies. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the green and I'm going to give my poppies in the foreground um, just some real quick little stems. And if you just barely use the tip of your brush, you can get a super skinny line. Okay, that's it. Teeny detail. If this is too detailed for you and you're freaking out, don't worry about it. Something I, I like to do detail. Okay, what else can we do? I know, bird. Let's put some birds in the sky. So wash your brush out. And just use black. And you know, the typical little birds, it's just like a little V, either going up or going down. You can make a little flock of birds flying here. There, that worked. Okay, is there any questions? Does anybody want me to make up something and stick it in the painting? As long as it's not like, you know, a Jeep or something like that. I actually had, had a, a class one time and we did a snowy scene and there was some pretty trees. And after a bottle of wine, my student came up to me and she goes, can you put a snowmobile on this for me? And I looked at her and went, sure. <laughs> and she pulled up her husband's snowmobile and we stuck it in the painting and I guess that became a gift. So you just never know. Anybody have any questions? I want to hear some voices. You're just did all enjoying it. Too thank much. you. Do you do anything with the sun, Marine? Do you just leave it white? Does it um, make you can. You can turn it yellow if you want to. Uh -huh. um, uh, sure. Yeah, make it yellow if you want. Um, <laughs> but I suggest you don't do the ray thing. You know. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we'll, we'll just leave it like that. Um, and also, don't forget to sign it. Mm -hmm. So let me show you. Um, you guys can keep painting, and I'm going to dig through my stuff right here. Oh, here we go. Okay. So remember I said if you didn't like the whole thing, you can just use part of it. So what this is is, is a match that I've cut apart. Mm -hmm. And that way, this kind of gives you an idea of mm -hmm. what it would look like in a frame. Or if I didn't like all of that, you know, maybe I just want to frame that part. Hey, that would make a good book bookmark, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of cute. Or, you know, I could do super small and abstract. Mm -hmm. So feel free to, you know, do anything you want with this. And the best part is if you guys are still in the mood and you still got lots of wine, you can turn, turn it over and use the backside. 
and you can do the whole thing again. So does anybody think they're gonna keep this up and do any more watercoloring? Or is you're like, nope, done. I, I would love to learn more. <coughs> I think you need to do another class. <laughs> like a beautiful yeah. sunset class. Ooh, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. So if, if you do want to continue with these, this little set that you have is great. Um, I do suggest though that you, you get good watercolor paper. And my favorite brand, if you guys want to write this down, is called Arches Cold Pressed 140 Pound. That's a lot of information. Um, but look for that. It's a good brand. That's what you're painting on, I, I think. I don't. I, I, I didn't do the shopping for the paper, but um, I'm hoping that's what it is. Because when you get cheap watercolor, it just uh, it does icky things. Like you'll you'll see where the machine has actually stamped it, and so you get these little grooves and things like that. This watercolor paper is actually 100% cotton. That's why it's absorbing. And then the different weights, it starts at, I think 100 and 140. And when you get to 300 pound, it's kind of like painting on a sponge. So the 140 oh, pound. Oh, you know, big birds. Nice. <laughs> it's a little bird. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that kind of melted in with everything. Who's, who's got birds? Let me see. Is that Steve? Birds. I'd like to see everyone's picture. Let's see. Yeah, let's hold them all up. So let me take a screenshot. <laughs> Oh, somebody's got, you got a, a heron in there, I see. Wow, these are cool. Oh, I love the clouds in, in Leslie's screen and the orange sun, lovely. Yeah, that's right, yellow and red make orange. Those are awesome. Carrie, mm -hmm. awesome. Your daughter's doing it with you? Oh, you're muted. <laughs> yeah, your daughter. <laughs> no, Grandma Kathy. Oh, Grandma, okay. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> okay, well, the last step that you guys need to do is sign your masterpiece. And you need to sign it in watercolor. Because I did some research online and I discovered that um, a way to authenticate a masterpiece, which you guys have all just done, is that the artist always signs it in the same medium that he used. So don't go grab a ballpoint pen or a Sharpie and then sign it because when they unearth this after Mount Hood buries us all, they're gonna be able to verify that you did this painting because you used the same paint to sign your name that you painted the picture with. Does that make sense? So everybody sign your name in watercolor and pick any color and put it wherever you want. Mm. Ta-da. I don't have anything snazzy. It's just my name. Okay, we're after four. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, we would love to hear your feedback uh, about this class. And if you'd like to see another one, we'd be um, happy to do that. Or if you have ideas about other classes, um, please let us know. I think we're gonna be doing virtual for a little while. So um, until we can actually be in person again, then we can continue classes in person. So I'd be happy to hear what you think. Be happy to see um, your masterpiece uh, photos on Facebook if you wanna do that. Um, but thank you all. Give your um, everyone a big hand of applause. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you, Maureen. Thank you all thank for coming. You. Thank you, Maureen, and enjoy the rest of your day. It's been really again. fun. Cheers. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank also, you, Maureen. And cheers. 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 Yeah, and shameless plug. Um, if cheers. you haven't followed the Bridge Arts right. Association on Facebook, okay. check us out on okay. Facebook. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Cheers.